Hi everybody, welcome back to Pagan's Witchy Corner. My name is Pagan, and today I'm joined by a familiar friend and awesome, awesome author who has written so many books that I literally would spend like half an hour going through all of them, but that is the awesome Deborah Blake. Deborah, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, and it's true. You have written so many books along with all your tarot decks and everything in between that there's just so many that we could sit here and talk about all the books for hours on end. But today we're going to talk about the newest one, which is Llewellyn's Little Book of Witchcraft, which just came out on September the 8th, if I remember correctly. And it is an adorable little book. It is so cute. Oh, my God. <laughs> It is. It's part of a series of Llewellyn's little book of, mm -hmm. you know, they've got, they've got a bunch of them, all of which are adorable. Although, yes, course, they are. Mine is most adorable. <laughs> it's, it's my baby. But no, I have, you know, I have a whole stack of them because my editor sent me a bunch to look at when I started writing this one mm -hmm. so that I know what the general format was. And I was like, Oh, cool. Free books. Um, yeah, I never say that. And, <laughs> um, yeah, so it was funny because, you know, my editor, Alicia, and I were talking, you know, after uh, I finished the uh, Everyday Witches Coven book, I was like, well, what am I going to write next? Because as you said, I've written a bunch of books and I was like, well, I'm starting to run out of topics. You know, I've written mm -hmm. the you know, book of brooms, a little book of cat magic, you know, it's you know, all of my everyday witchcraft books. And I'm like, well, what haven't I done yet? And she said, well, you haven't done any for the Llewellyn's Little Book series. And I went, that's true. And I said, well, what topics, you know, have, haven't been covered yet? And she said, well, I was looking at that before I talked to you and I realized nobody did the Little Book of Witchcraft. And I basically went, dibs. <laughs> They're like, Okay, you know, I believe I'm capable of writing that book. I would say, and, yes, you are highly yeah. qualified. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm like, she said, yeah, when I thought about it, I was like, well, who better to write the little book of witchcraft than the woman who wrote like 13 other books for us? And I've actually all, already written the little book of spellcraft, which will be on uh next year or very early the year after. It'll be either. Like I've got like three three different books in progress, but mm -hmm. I, I think it might be like uh yeah, no, I think it's towards like the end of twenty-four, like September, yeah, you know, fall of twenty-four. Okay. Um so so yeah, so there will be two Llewellyn little book of, but right now I've got the witchcraft one and people seem to be liking it. You know, they're fun little books. They are fun little books. And they're little books that are so easy to you know if you're somebody that's like i don't have a lot of space for tons and tons and tons of witchcraft books literally the little books are just like the jam-packed version that you need for basically anything as long as there's a topic on it it's all that you need for that topic i guarantee right. it it's so awesome <laughs> it's basics i mean it covers you know what what i like is that it's got you know and almost all of them have this you know mm -hmm. there's a few that are slightly different but there's like at the very beginning, there's a list of activities, a list of spells and a list of tips. And all through the book, there's all these, here's a little spell, here's a little activity, here's a little tip. And, you know, like in mine, I start out with commonly used terms because people who are new to the craft, you know, you say, okay, we're all going to turn Diasil now. And everybody's like, Whoa. <laughs> and they're like, what is that? <laughs> or even things like, um, ground and center people don't necessarily know what that means so i always start off with like you know the, the obviously if you already know that stuff you just skip that section mm -hmm. and go yeah i know that um and then i talk about you know the variations on a theme the different ways you can practice witchcraft which are pretty much you know as many ways as there are witches um oh, yes. you know which is you know, again, part of the fun part of it. And then I talk about the Sabbaths and the lunar cycle and special occasions and and divination and daily practices and witchy crafts because my group's very crafty. So we do lots of crafty things, you know, in conjunction with our witchcraft, which is mm -hmm. which is fun. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, and then I talk about spells because that's very important. And uh, you know, I you know have a bunch a bunch of fun spells in here. Yes, um, there there is some really great starter spells in there, and uh, I'm kind of interested. You know, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But the the spellcrafting book too, because I'm like, hmm, that that's gonna be good because you know, obviously, when you're first starting out, you want the you know everybody's starter spells because you right. haven't figured out how to do spellcrafting yet, and so once you get all of that, and I really enjoyed the fact that this is a very easy format for somebody who's just starting out to be like okay i don't know anything tell me everything and it's like right. here <laughs> it's all you need right here let's start right here <laughs> but the other good thing about it i tried really hard to make it so it would also be useful for people who've been practicing for a while i mean the spell section is still useful mm -hmm. the activity oh, absolutely. Section is still useful and I, I don't know about you but i occasionally like forget stuff and, and need to look up some of the relatively basic things even after i'm like wait what date is maybon on um oh no. yeah no i do that I, all yeah, the time exactly <laughs> so yeah now there's like what that was one of the reasons i wrote the eclectic which is book of shadows is because i wanted a like a place where all the stuff that information I needed would be in one place. And so I made it for myself and then shared it with everybody else. I mean, the electric eclectic, which is book of shadows is also probably by far your prettiest book. Oh my God. It's so it's beautiful. It's so gorgeous. So, and Nikki Mueller did the illustrations of, she did the cover and the interior she's illustrations. She's such a beautiful artist. Oh I love her. my God. <laughs> When I first got the proofs for this, you know, just on the computer, I was like, oh, my God, that's going to be so pretty. And then I pulled the first one out of the box when they sent me the box of books and I almost cried. It, oh. is, <laughs> it is so pretty. And in fact, um, you know, I I made them, made them, I just asked them and they were nice because they're Llewellyn. I, I had them put you know, my bio is in the front and Mickey's bio is in the back mm -hmm. because so much of what makes this book amazing is her artwork. Absolutely. You know, it would not be the same. And she was like, oh, that's really sweet. I'm like, no, it, you deserve it. it. This is your book too. It's beautiful. And yes, it does have incredible amounts of great information in it. She said modestly. Um, but it's <laughs> also really pretty. And it was my first hardcover. You know, the little books of, of witchcraft things, those are hardcovers too, which mm -hmm. is great. This was my very first hardcover. So it was very exciting. And, um, and I, you know, I designed it so there was all sorts of blank pages in there so people could add as they learned their own stuff and mm -hmm. wanted to expand to make it their own book of shadows, you know, because that's what a book of shadows is. It's, it's, you know, where you put your wisdom and, you know, I didn't expect people to stop with what I gave them. Hopefully they would Hopefully use more <laughs> and, you know, come up with spells of their own. But the only problem is the book is so beautiful. All these people wrote and went, I can't write in it. I it's too pretty. I'm like, no, you're supposed to. It's okay. I give you permission. And I had I finally had so many people say they did not want to write in the book. And yes, you can. Please I have two book. copies. I have one that I've written in and one that's just for pretty. And I think everybody should have two copies. That's, <laughs> that's Deb's theory. Yeah. Deborah Blake's advice to everyone is buy two copies of each of her books. <laughs> friend if necessary hey they're small um but we're actually going to be coming out with an accompanying workbook at the beginning of next year i think it's january uh my god that's really pretty close <laughs> yeah um, we're almost there <laughs> yeah i'm like I, how are we in the middle of september i don't know <laughs> but yeah so that one will be a paperback and while it will still be beautiful, it's going to have copies of the illustrations. Um, but it's going to have all new information. But it also, I think it'll be something where it will people will be more comfortable, you know, actually writing in it and, and doing that kind of thing. So, yeah. Now, you know, 
the the little book of witchcraft no don't write in that one (laughs) there's also not a whole lot of space to write in that one just for the record well and you can't i mean any any book of mine if you have ideas or notes go ahead and write in it it's your book i mean yeah that's true if you're you're an annotator absolutely yeah there's, you know, it's not a library book. If it's a library book, don't write in it. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, um, obviously, you just talked about the journal that's coming out, but you also have a a book that's being reprinted and coming out uh, with Cross Crow as well, right? Yes, two in fact, but one that's coming out in November and one that's coming out next March. Yeah, um, Cross Crow books who they're fairly new to the scene um, but they are doing some amazing things they had actually contacted me um, to ask me if I would do a foreword for somebody else's book that they were putting out and I'm like who are these people what are they talking about (laughs) and I looked them up and I went oh no they're they're legit they're cool and it happened to be uh, Sandra Kine Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, they, they were like, I don't know if you're familiar with this book. And I literally went to my shelf and pulled it off. And I went, yes, I have the original copy, which again, was out of print. Yep. And so they're, what they're doing, they're putting out some original works, but they're also taking all of these classic authors whose books never should have gone out of print, including mine. I mean, it's a, it's a sales thing when a book's happens, been out for a while yeah. sometimes. Yeah, we, it, it happens. It's nothing, it's nothing personal. Llewellyn doesn't, you know, go, we're taking your book out of print because we hate you. No, they take your book out of print because it's not selling and they can only put out so many books. You know, yeah, they, they have so many books they can print and all that. But, and eventually you know, to... is is really, yeah. you know, doing this thing. So I said, Really, you know, I mean, first of all, yes, I'd be honored to write a foreword for this. That that would be great. Um, and I love what you're doing. You know, I think it's really wonderful that you're putting these books out. And, you know, by the way, did you happen to know I have two books that are out of print? You know, one of them, this The Circle Covenant Grove, A Year of Magical Practice, I had put it out myself. You know, mm-hmm. I self-published it. I didn't. I mean, I, I had a new cover made for it, which actually uh, Mickey did, which was very nice. I didn't really promote it. I did. I just was like, OK, the people who want it and are literally finding the original version, if you can find it, it's $60, which is kind of absurd. Um, I'm like, I wouldn't pay $60 for that book. <laughs> um, no, it was like originally 18 or 16 or something but it's because there's not very many of them out there yeah of the course originals. um but uh and of course they immediately wrote me back and went we would love to put those out and they went full beans uh, so, <laughs> yeah. circle covenant groves they made this incredible new cover which is so beautiful and um there's a foreword by uh, Patty Wigginton, who I just adore. Mm-hmm. Um, I was, you know, they basically gave me a list of people because it didn't have a foreword originally. It just had me. Um, and they said, you know, here's here's four people. Are any of them anybody you want? And I was like, Patty, Patty, get Patty to do it. Because <laughs> I've been following her online for years. Oh, I, yeah. I don't think we've ever met in person, but she's done so much good work. And, you know, is so you know, in touch with the witchcraft community and, you know, knows lots of things. And so, yeah, I was, I was, you know, and we, you know, we're like online buddies kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, that's, I, I love the witchcraft community, you know, the witchcraft writer community, especially, you know, you all are amazing. Like all of you. (laughs) and, And it is very much, a philosophy of a rising tide raises all ships. Absolutely. You know, I don't know any, well, um, I don't know many <laughs> authors who are only focused on their own writing. They We cross promote each other all the time online. As it should be. Like, oh yeah, well, Wiser Books just put out um, this incredible biography of Scott Cunningham 
I saw you... I've seen that all over uh, social oh, media. I have not God. gotten a copy, um, but you I have seen one. it all. I mean, you will cry. I will you, cry. You're not even make <laughs> I, I can probably the... message my contacts at Wiser and be like, hey, can I get a copy? Oh, yeah. For no, it? that's. Um, <laughs> they yeah, Judica Isles and I, you know, also. I love Judica. You know, she's such she's a wonderful amazing. Human. And we <laughs> have met in person, like at, when I used to go to PantheaCon, we met there a number of times. And um, she, you know, I think they had posted about the book on Instagram. And I said, oh my God, that looks great. It's written by his sister. And she said, uh -huh. would you be willing to, you know, write a blurb for it? And I went, oh, yeah, send it, send it along. You know, they sent the, you know, the e-version of it that, at that point. And uh, Matt uh, Aaron, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, A-R-Y-N, -A um, wrote the foreword for that. And the freaking foreword made me cry. And I don't uh -huh. cry over anything. It's an awesome, awesome book. It really gives you this insight into a man who influenced so many of us but you know i never got to meet him you know, no i by think the time he was passed out before i got into witchcraft gone. yeah so so yeah fabulous book but yeah we all we all sort of you know try and promote each other which is which is good because you know the internet it's gotten so much more difficult you know facebook and mm -hmm. instagram and things you know their algorithm stuff and then of course you know twitter <laughs> you know i don't even know we won't even go into twitter. the twitter wars yeah. and all that um, now <laughs> yeah but but yeah i mean it's really hard to get the visibility for mm -hmm. your books that you, you that used to be a little bit easier so it is wonderful that yeah authors are like hey did you see deborah blake has a new book out it's really cool you know which is I, which is well i love seeing how um uh, and i see this more now in the fiction communities but it wasn't so prominent in the fiction communities but now i'm seeing it a lot more but in the pagan community especially the pagan writer community yes everybody is like hey promote this person hey mm -hmm. let's talk about their book hey this person over here is like look i got a copy of this book in my mail today and it's like yeah everybody oh, yeah. has well, a copy there. it's so awesome you know, I, I write fiction too and have for i started with the nonfiction, but fiction was what i always intended to write the non-fiction fiction sort books of are so good i just haven't gotten to talk to you about them <laughs> but but yeah i you know i and many of them do have witches in them mm -hmm. not not the the cozy mysteries those just have cats and dogs but that's okay we like those too um but yeah you know i've i've had a number of authors you know people that long before i ever got published i was you know helping to promote their stuff and talk it up and yeah, they returned the favorite. Yeah, writers in general, again, not all of them, because you know, I I don't like all writers. I don't like all witches. I I, I don't like most people. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I like writers and and authors, and then a few other people, cat people, you know, mm -hmm. but um, animal people in general. Uh, but yeah, it's a great a great bunch of folks and. For the most part, super supportive of each other. I mean, the witchcraft community in general is pretty supportive of each other, except every once in a while, there's some sort of kerfuffle, which, I, frankly, I miss most of them. People start talking about, oh, yeah, there was another big fuss. And I'm like, there was a fuss? What? <laughs> yeah, that's what? how I am, too. I'm like, oh, there was a thing that happened? Like, yeah, and I just don't. I, I had my head in the sand over here doing something yeah. else. <laughs> well, I'm I'm busy. I write seven days a week, you know, mm -hmm. and I have cats to herd. And you know, up until a year and a half ago, I had a day job too. Um, so yeah, and I have you know a house and a garden and a you know, well, I wouldn't say I have a life. I have you know, I have friends. Um, <laughs> so I don't. I do not have the time and energy to get drawn into this silliness i'm just like yeah if you don't like what somebody else is doing just don't follow them don't don't promote them don't whatever just you know just leave them alone i don't mm -hmm. know play nice play That's nice with everybody <laughs> yeah deborah blake's rule of witchcraft and life play nice that's if i could you know they every once in a while they're like well if you could put a, anything on a billboard that would be mine play nice play nice 
<laughs> I mean, that's almost how I sign off most of our podcast episodes, which are, you know, be kind to each other. <laughs> yep, exactly. It's like, you know, if you have a choice to be nice or not be nice, pick be nice. It's yeah. not hard. And if you don't have anything nice to say, well, don't socialize with the person that you don't have anything nice to say about. Exactly. You know, I had... Honestly, it's so much better for your mental health. (laughs) Yeah. I had a sort of a bad day a week, week, two weeks ago. I actually gave myself an internet break for the long weekend, which I never do. But I was like, people, ugh. But yeah, I got two, (laughs) two emails in one day from people complaining that there was something they didn't approve of in my books. And... You know, one of them was so unpleasant, I didn't even respond. And the other one, I just wrote back and went, well, that's not what I said. Um, But, you know, all I can think is, you know, it's okay if you don't like my books. Nobody's going to, you know, not everybody is going to like my books or my writing or my personality or my face or whatever. (laughs) I feel Um, that. (laughs) then Then just don't read the book. You know, if... If you object to the fact that I have things in there that are not vegetarian, well, okay, you know, then don't people can get that book. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, don't. yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, well, then the other one, the other one said, you know, you've said in many places, and I'm thinking, well, that means you've read a bunch of my things. That's nice. Um, you know, you said that that hexing doesn't work, and I'm like, no. That is absolutely not what I say. I say hexing works just fine. I just choose not to do it. And that if you do choose to do it, you know, that's a personal choice, but be aware that there may be some kickback from the universe, you know, and not everybody believes that. Some people believe you can do whatever you want. And I'm like, well, again, personal choice. I do not police other witches. You know, I can't even police my cats. Um, <laughs> you know, so, but yeah, the fact that this guy actually wrote and complained a thing about a thing that it wasn't even what I said. I'm like, how many books did you think you read this in that you didn't actually read like, it correctly? Properly read it? Yeah. No, I yeah, feel that. So, yeah. I'm like, yeah, if you don't have something nice to say, don't email me. You know, it's okay if you take my book and throw it against the wall or donate it to, you know, the thrift store. That's, donate it you know, to I your mean, local much... library if you don't like the book. Right. Exactly. I mean, I I much would I would be much happier if you did like my book. I try and write books people will like. But if you don't like it, why do you feel the need to write me an email telling me you think I suck? That's rude, dude. <laughs> You know, just be nice. I remember when I first got into the author scene, and one of the most valuable things that one of my college professors, because I have a creative writing degree, and um, he basically said, "Learn this and like have it tattooed on your forehead if you need <laughs> it." But he's like, "Learn that you will not always be everyone's cup of tea." Absolutely true. And, I, and I, why it's the would you one piece be? of advice that I have always remembered. I don't remember much else from my college days, yeah. but yeah. I do remember that. And I'm like, you know, and it's true though, because when you write a book or you you know, make a piece of art mm-hmm. or you do a podcast or you do whatever, any sort of creation that you do, there is going to be somebody out there that's like, ew, no, that yuck, I don't like that. Oh, and it's yeah, like, well, okay, you don't like that. That's fine. If You're not the my one cup of tea star and I'm not review. Yours. Oh my god! Every <laughs> once in a while, you get you know one of these one star reviews where they're complaining about the smallest little thing, and you're like. First of all, you gave the whole book one star because you didn't like one sentence on one page of the book. Okay, then. Or or Amazon didn't send it on time. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's that's, that's, that's not really an, but, an author yeah, issue. I mean, if I, don't, if I don't like a book, I just don't review it. I don't, you know, I, I, I don't feel the need to, uh, you know, in fact, I don't bother to review a book unless I can give it at least four stars because otherwise why am I going to take my time and energy it's the ones I love that I want everybody to know it's a terrific book yep those are the Mm -hmm. ones I take the time and energy to review by the way reviews are really really important please review my books (laughs) but not with one star like four is okay five spectacular if you don't like it just again donate it somewhere but if you do love an author's book mine and everybody else's Reviews are part of what sells more books. 
And if you like an author's book and you want them to write more, they have to sell the ones that are out already or their publishers don't give them money to write any more books. It's yes, a thing. It is a it's thing. it's a business. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, we would like to think of, you know, authors as, you know, sitting in a corner, you know, blissfully, you know, typing Not away. everyone can be Stephen King. Just so. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> and, and again, I wouldn't want to be. You know, it's he, I'm sure he's a charming person. He, you know, his books are not my cup of tea because I find life scary enough without adding horror on purpose. Um, I have friends that love them. He's an extremely good writer. Don't get oh, me yeah. wrong. That's he's why they're good. so scary because he's an extreme. The only one I ever read, I couldn't put it down. But then when I was done, I couldn't walk past the windows. <laughs> for like a week. So I'm like, no, can't read any more of these. Can't read any more of these. And, you know, the interesting thing about it, too, when you get to that point where you're trying to market your books and you're trying to get those reviewers and all that. And as somebody who gets a lot of books, you know, from <laughs> publishers for review and for podcast interviews and, you know, doing those promotions and all those good things, um, you know. My and we love you for that. And I just say, <laughs> you're my I love favorite. Doing it. <laughs> I love doing it. And yes, there are books that I get sent that are not my cup of tea. They're not my favorite. And when I read the synopsis, I'm like, man, that sounds really good. And then I read the book and I'm like, oh, well, that was not what I was expecting. And it wasn't my favorite. And that's a lot of times, you know, as a professional reviewer, and I say professional, I don't get paid. Unfortunately, I get paid in advertising revenue. And that's why right. there's ads but on the still, podcast. You you do this as a <laughs> thing this is this yeah is this, your this thing. is my thing and so you know having that you know there there's a lot of times when i get art copies especially i will message the authors especially right. fiction authors and be like so i i hate to tell you this and i'm so sorry please don't hate me i didn't enjoy your book do you still want me to review it I will review it, but it will not be, you know, four stars yeah, or three stars it. and above. Um, it, it will be honest. <laughs> and they're like, no, actually, or they're like, can you wait, you know, a couple of weeks after, you know, and it's like, okay. And I always ask because I don't want to hurt an author's feelings because, oh, yes, absolutely. that does happen, unfortunately. Well, but and because I'm fairly well known as an author, I get a lot of requests to blurb other pagan mm -hmm. books. Um, and what I always say is if it's, if it's somebody that I'm willing to look at at all, cause I can't look at all of them, you know, yeah. I just don't have that kind of time, but you know, if it's somebody who either Llewellyn asks me or they're a new Llewellyn author or like Judica asks me or whatever, or if they contact me and say, you know, I love your books. Could you, and they're, you know, it's a, it's a real book. I'll say, I will happily take a look at it. Mm -hmm. If I do not feel like the book is my cup of tea, I will not blurb it. Because I mean, I'm that's not fair. To... That's completely fair. Well, it's the same with because, reviewing. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know, if people see my name on the inside of a book, like with this Scott Cunningham one, where I went, oh my God, this is, you know, the best thing ever. Um, the people who are my fans may actually go out and buy the book based on that. I mean, that's why they ask. That's why they ask for, for those things. Yes. Um, that's why people, I want them to blur my books and say they love them. But if it's something that I don't like, then there's a good chance that the people who like my books are also not going to like it. And I don't want to steer them wrong. Or if it's something I did have one author who sent me a, it was a book on healing and it was, I think it was a magical healing book. She had some advice in there that I thought was not good. Um, maybe not safe. And I just wrote back and I said, look, you know, here's my objection to it. I'm not going to blurb it. You know, the, the book is well written. Uh, you know, you, you feel free to ignore my advice, but I, I would be very cautious about putting that in a book because it could be harmful. But I, yeah, that was one of the few, I, most of the people I say yes, but you know, every once in a while, there's one that I have to, I have to turn down because yeah, if you're going to say yes, go out and get this book, you have to have liked it. Of course. I mean, it's the same with, you know, me writing reviews or having right. guests on my podcast and those kinds of things. I, you're you not going to have somebody you hate. <laughs> no, you're not going to have somebody whose book that you're just like, 
oh, I didn't like the book at all. Why are you yeah. here? Like, yeah, it, tell it makes me why it you wrote this book. Why What's did you write this piece you? of trash? <laughs> no, we don't do that. Have we, you considered therapy? <laughs> we and an editor we we don't do that because of the fact that a it's harmful to the author b it's harmful right. to the publisher and c it's also harmful to the audience because the audience right. wants to listen to something that you're passionate about that you enjoy well, yeah and, and you know yeah you have a limited amount of time and energy again oh, yes. <laughs> put it into the things put it into the things you're enthusiastic about uh, the authors the books whatever that you can honestly say I loved this and here's why I would want to talk to you about it as you know I'm not I'm not going to spend time telling people about a book I hated I'm just going to ignore it and move on and find another one I like Absolutely absolutely So speaking of books you said that you have several new ones coming out. Um, you said you had about three new ones that are coming out here for at least So yeah. <laughs> so well the thing about about writing is mm -hmm. There's about a two-year lag between oh, yes. having a book accepted by the publisher and having them go, yes, you know, start writing this, and having the book come out. So because it has know, to go through production a, and editing and copying, oh, and, yeah. exactly, all and the stuff, all the printed. stuff. <laughs> I mean, especially like the little hardcovers and things, they're getting printed in China now. So there's a huge lag for that. Oh, I didn't realize um, that. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, and that was the Eclectic Witches Book of Shadows came out when we were still having some fairly serious um, supply, supply chains. Chain issues. Yeah. And it was it was late. I had all my all my promo all lined up for book release day and book release day came and nobody had the book. It wasn't in the warehouse. It was like, no. Oh, oh no. Yeah. So yeah, then then the Llewellyn's little book of witchcraft, they actually it came to the warehouse early and they released it a few days early without telling me because you know, person A doesn't talk to person B. And I'm like, Oh, all my release day stuff. I'm like, I'm not, I don't have it. Now you have, no. Okay. They released yeah. it a few days early. I thought the universal release date for all Llewellyn books was always the eighth of the month. It always was. And yet they had it in their warehouse. They were sending it out to everybody who pre-ordered it. And oh. it showed up on Amazon three days early. All of a sudden it was available instead of not available, you know, coming soon, whatever. Oh, <laughs> I was just like, oh my okay. Well, I mean, like, what are you talking about? I suppose that that sometimes that's how things go. I love technology, and <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, so the next the the two books that I've completed and handed in, the next one up is going to be the companion book for the Eclectic Witches Book of Shadows, which gotcha. I had so much fun. I it would I've never written a companion book before. It was like something new and different. So that was a blast. And I believe that that is out in January of next year. Okay. And then there's the Llewellyn's little book of spellcraft, which I think people are really going to enjoy. It's, you know, it's the next level up from the little book of witchcraft. Because, yes, then it's like more spells. Yay, more spells. But also, you know, how to go about writing them yourself if you want to and why you do this. And here's the components of it. Mm -hmm. It was actually sort of funny because, you know, I had a, a couple of chapters on spellcraft in the little book of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. and yep. I sat down to write the little book of spellcraft and I went, crap, did I already say everything? <laughs> oh, no. like, what did I? But then I realized that now I only like just touched on things and there is plenty more to cover. But yeah, yeah I nearly gave myself a heart attack. Oh no. I was like, ah, did I put it all on the other book? I was not thinking ahead. So yeah, there's those two. And the book that I am literally finishing the what we call final polish revision before I send it back to my editor, Alicia, for her to read for the first time. So this is like, she hasn't seen the book yet. You know? Okay. So I'm doing my final polish edits before I, I you know, send it in. And that's going to be another 365 day book. Oh, neat. Because, yeah. I have the year and a day of everyday witchcraft. And, you know, that came out in, I don't know, 2019 or 17 or, you know, a while ago. And people 17. loved it. But 17. I, 
17. And so again, I started getting, you know, emails and messages from people saying, I love this book and I've used it every year, but I've now used it every year for like five years. Can you do another one? And I went, huh, maybe. So I am just finishing up a year and a day of everyday magic, which is like a whole nother 366 days worth of stuff. And if you think that was easy to come up with, Oh, I bet. Not. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so that will be out in January of 25. It was, it was going to come out a little earlier and they had to move some things around, but it actually makes sense to have a year and a day book come out in January anyway. Of course. Yes. So, I mean, not that you can't just open it to any page. People do that all the time. Um, but yeah, so the, this one, as soon as I finish it and it gets sent off, I don't actually have anything else lined up, although I have a couple of ideas and I'm going to be going back to working on a novel that I started back in the spring and then had to set aside because I had contracts. So that's completely fair. Um, and if you listen to the other show, I've already I did ask you about this last time we were on the show. I just hadn't gotten around to sending you a formal invitation. Here's your formal invitation. Come on the other podcast and talk about your fiction books. <laughs> Thank you very much. Accepted. Yay. So if you listen to Pagan's I, reading I just up, scared a cat. She was, oh, she's sorry. lying asleep next to me and she's like, why is she getting excited? <laughs> Sorry, pretty tat. Um, so if you listen to Pagan's Reading Nook, which you all should, you should all subscribe to the other podcast, which is Pagan's Reading Nook. That is my fiction podcast. Uh, Deborah will also be on there here in the coming months. So you can that be looking be so for that. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, this has been so much fun chatting with you about all your books. Um, now, obviously, I'm presuming that with, you know, everything that's going on in your life, you don't have any like major like events or book signings that you have coming up. Was that correct? I actually don't, um, in part because I'm busy, in part because I'm really not comfortable traveling at this particular time that's um, and going to places <laughs> with large groups of people. I did a few things at the end of last year and the beginning of this year, and I just went, you know, however, I do have a Patreon, which, you know, people can follow me there. Um, and for some of the folks there, I'm going to probably start doing um, some like little online uh, rituals or classes or something. I haven't decided exactly what, I have to see what I have the time and energy for. I mean, I did for a while do a series of online witchcraft classes, which were a lot of fun. But at that point, I was, you know, I had my day job running a shop with 50 artists in it, and I was writing, and I was making jewelry, and I, then I got long COVID, and I just went, nope, I'm yeah, tired. That's fair. Uh, that's completely fair. But um, yeah, I am, I am thinking about trying to do something online, just because, yeah, I miss seeing the peeps. You know, I, I love my witchcraft community, and it is sort of sort of sad not to be going out and about and seeing people um but i'm i'm not i'm not there yet that's fair that's completely fair and i'm assuming folks can if they really you know are hunting for a signed copy from you they can probably order one through your website right yeah i well i actually i have an etsy shop oh that's so, perfect yeah if they Even go to better. my website they can, <laughs> they can get the links to everything but yeah i sell signed copies of my books that's basically why i i mean i have some of my jewelry on there too but it's mostly because people were always saying oh where can i get a signed copy and i even you know pre-covid i maybe went to two conferences or conventions a year mm -hmm. i don't you know i don't travel a lot um and so yeah they can get signed copies i also sometimes have like you know gift things so like you can get like the everyday witch's coven with a cute little like gift pack if you want to give it to somebody else or yourself that has like a little stone crescent moon and bookmarks oh, that's awesome and so yeah and and my jewelry the few pieces so yeah if they if they go to my website they can get find the links to all the things although i did find out by accident uh, that if you look at it on your phone, the links don't show up on the side. I don't know. Uh -oh. And I I tend not to look at a lot of stuff on my phone. I use my computer. So I'm going to have to talk to my, my website person 
and say, <laughs> okay, is there a way to fix this? Um, I'm sure there definitely is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there is too. But I'm also sort of everywhere. So if you, you know, if you go to Etsy and put in Deborah Blake, you're probably going to find me. Um, and if you go to Facebook and put in Deborah Blake, you're going to find me. And Instagram, you have to put Deborah Blake author because I mm -hmm. somebody else had already gotten Deborah Blake. Yes. Oh. And all of those links will be in the show description. So it will be easy access for you to find all of them, as, including the Etsy shop link. I will make sure that that is there for you yeah. guys. And, and the website is, you know, www.deborahblakeauthor.com. So, you know, and the great thing is, there aren't a lot of Deborah Blakes out there. So if you put it in a search engine, I pop up right away. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. There is no escape. You are, you are fairly popular and easy to find. So it's not difficult to I am not find hiding. Deborah Blake. <laughs> I mean, I'm hiding in my house, but otherwise not hiding. <laughs> yeah, I, I, am, I am in the places. I'm even on TikTok now. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm there. I mean... I think that's kind of it, how it is with all TikTok. Like most of us don't know what we're doing. We just kind of like shoot in the dark and hope for the best. <laughs> well, and you know, yeah, I'm just like, okay, I've put up a video. Yes, I know the book cover is backwards. I don't know how to fix that. Uh, There's a way but, to fix that, but I don't know how to do it either. So yeah, you're not alone. well, and you know, somebody said to me, well, you know, when you're filming with your phone, just use the other side, you know, the phone from the back and that'll turn out right. I'm like, but then how can I tell what it looks like? Because I'm looking at the back of my phone. <laughs> you know, and apparently you just have to sort of experiment to find out where the sweet spot is. And I'm I'm like, or they there, can just look at the there book is cover a button. Backwards. Yeah, I was gonna say there is a button that you can do to do it. I just don't know how to do it yet. So. But I can do it with photos. I haven't found a way to do it with videos yet. Yeah, and, that's fair. And and yet some people are doing it. So clearly there's a way. I just I need to find somebody who has figured the way out. And get them to tell me what <laughs> we it need is. a a TikTok tutorial class. That's what. We yeah, need. So, you know, probably if I go to YouTube and put in. How the oh, heck yeah. do I use YouTube? <laughs> Somebody will tell me. Absolutely. You know, in my copious free time, which there's, you know, the downside to that. That is but very thank true. For, thank you for having me back again. It's always so much fun to talk to you. It is and so much fun talking to you too. Fiction show. That's cool. Something to look forward to. It will be a good time. So everybody, all those links will be in the show description. Make sure you go and buy Deborah's books. If you would like a signed copy, the Etsy shop will be available so you can do that. Um, review your books, love your authors, send them some love, follow them on social media, tell them on social media that you like their books. And if you didn't like their books, you don't have to read it. And also if you buy the book and you didn't like it, donate it to your local library because local libraries always will accept copies of books so that people who are financially strapped cannot, you know, who cannot purchase it. Support your local libraries, obviously. And if you cannot purchase the book, head to your local library. If they don't have a copy, request a copy. They will either find it from another library or they will purchase a copy for themselves. So yeah, it's it's a thing. You know, people say to me, Oh, I can't afford to buy all the books I want. And I say, go to the library. I am a huge fan of libraries. Grew up in a library. My mom was a librarian and then a library director. Worked in three different libraries at three different times of my life. The you know, my local library is so supportive of me. And I always, as soon as I get my box of author copies, I march down to my library and donate one of my books mm -hmm. to them so they have it. Absolutely. So, that's the Go way to, to do your it. local library. <laughs> support your local libraries and, and support and your authors if your, you can. <laughs> and and don't forget your indie bookstores too. That too. That is because they will even if they don't have it on the shelf and the indie bookstores don't have a big, you know, they can't have everything, but they will special order you any book that is in print. Yes. All you have to do is walk in and ask. Mhm. Mm they will do it and it is awesome so Deborah, this has been an incredible conversation i always love having you here i can't wait to have you back again in the future and we will do it again but everyone who's been listening thank you so much for being here thank you so much for listening take care of yourselves be kind to each other and i will see you all next time bye bye everyone